hereby call the uh, Tuesday, September 3rd Finance Committee, uh, it being 7 p.m. to order councilors. There is a uh, planning board meeting going on tonight, so feel free if you need to go. I know uh, some of our colleagues have to go back and forth. We just have to be cognizant of having a quorum here in the chamber, and if we don't, we'll just go into recess. Um, I do just want to give a couple pieces of information, if I could. Um, w when we read number one, um, Officer Joe Miranda from Brockton Police just texted me. Unfortunately, he's tied up at work tonight. He can't be here. Um, and from my humble opinion, that's not a problem. We'd rather have him doing his job out there right now. Um, Mr. Landy, who was an invited guest, uh, also is unable to. He's at a library uh, board meeting tonight. Um, and in terms of, I know the police chief um, uh, reached out to me, um, and John Crowley can't be here as well, but I know, I know we have the captain here. Um, and one other agenda item um, relative to number 11 when we get there, Marty Brophy is no longer the real estate custodian that had changed, so Attorney Nezzarella or uh, his designee will be here on that matter. Madam Clerk, if we could go into number one, please. Reappointment of Joe Miranda of 19 Wallace Street, Brockton, Mass, to the Brockton Community Cable Television Board for a three-year term. Invited Mark Lindy, General Manager, BCA, Joe Miranda. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly second. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Matter carries. It's going back favorable to the full city council. Thank you. Number two, please. Reappointment of Kenneth Galligan of 25 Messina Drive, Brockton, Mass, to the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term. Invited, Kenneth Galligan. Chief, good evening. Good evening, councilors. Thank you for being here. Do you have a statement for the committee? Well, first of all, I guess I would thank the mayor for putting my name back in for another three years on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I have got 26 years there now on the board, and uh, I'm looking forward to another three years working with my board and uh, working for the citizens of the city and you people. Thank you for Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Just a quick statement. I usually would just make the motion to recommend, but we have a lot of people that give up their time to serve on boards and commissions. I think the example of what people can do in their city for the people of Brockton is what the, and I still call him the chief, does, and I can't thank him enough for his service and, uh, and how hard he works at that particular board, but uh, it, it's a great example for any young people in this city that want to get involved on what the chief has done and continues to do for the people of Brockton. So thank you and thank you, Chief. Thank you, Councilor. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. On the motion also, I just want to echo those sentiments because if you know the chief, he throws himself in a thousand percent, does his homework more than, more than anybody else, and he also volunteers time on the Historical Society and the Fire Museum. So thank you for what you do to Brockton, Chief. Thank you. Uh, anybody else on the motion? Councilor, please. Thank you, Mr. President. No, first of all, we want to, we want to thank um, Retired fire chief, I don't think he knows the definition of retired because we're very fortunate he also serves on the traffic commission. As we say regularly, there are many positions available in this city to serve on various boards, but this is a demonstration of dedication and devotion and ultimate follow through. And what's really important to mention here is not only does this man do his job in a professional and, and a well-versed manner, but he teaches other people. And, and he, so that allows for uh, empowerment, and I, we're, we're very grateful and we're very, very fortunate to have you. So thank you very much for considering serving again. Thank, thank you, Council. Council Nicastro, please. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening. Mr. Galligan. Um, I'll add to the love fest. <laughs> uh, I served with you on the Zoning Board of Appeals for two years. I learned so much from you and some of the others. Um, you are fair and objective. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had the pleasure of coming in front of you many times since uh, uh, becoming a city councilor at the Traffic Commission and the ZBA, and you are equally fair and objective at the Traffic Commission, and I'm grateful for your work and your volunteerism at this stage in your career. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Councilor. Councilor Fowell, please. I think we ought to vote before he changes his mind. <laughs> no. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Probably one of the only good decisions I made as mayor was appointing you as fire chief. So thank you. I can always point to that when everyone else says you, <laughs> you just didn't cut it far well. I say, wait I, a minute. I outlasted you. You certainly <laughs> did. So thank you for all you do. It's a motion on the floor of a favor recommendation back to full council. It was properly second. All in favor, kindly raise your hands. 
I'll oppose. That motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Favor Thank you, roll. Counsel. Back to the full council. We'll go to number three, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of grant funds in the amount of $200,000 from Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, MassDEP, GAP 2 Grant Funding Program, to City of Brockton, Department of Public Works, GAP 2 Grant Funding Program Grant Fund. Invited Troy Clarkson, CFO, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, Dave Norton, Water Sewer Contract Administrator. Good evening, Mr. Commissioner. Good evening. Thanks for Good being evening, here. Good evening, everybody. This was a $200,000 grant that we received from DEP. Um, it's a no match grant. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Move motion favorable. I, I, motion, on motion made on the motion. The motion. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Raleigh. Um, I have a technical question. Because you're coming in front of us tonight, um, 2019, to approve this grant, but yet when you read the contract form with the Commonwealth, it's dated August of last year. And the attached description that came with it acknowledges that we received the money in 2018 and already used it to furnish and install the second turbo blower. So is that true? We've already Yes, yes, Councillor, it was. We did receive it in 2018, um, but the project had to be completed, so it, it, it was longer. Um, we just re, uh, we completed it in 2018, and then the checks kept getting sent to the wrong area, so we finally got it squared away. That that's, was the holdup. So that was the old, the check is in the mail? Excuse Someone me? Someone else in mail? The check no, was it, it was else? being sent to the wrong department twice. Okay. So that took like two or three months to, to, to get that squared away. There was nothing on here, but surely this isn't all of it. I guess you had to complete the work before they paid us for it. Correct. Okay, I Correct. understand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's how most of these grants work. Most of them is the project has to be complete and then we can apply for this grant money. Okay. That's kind of Thank you. That's You're welcome. It's a motion. It was probably second in favor of recommendation back to the council. All in favor, please raise your hand. I'll oppose. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you. Favorable back to the full council. Number four, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of total grant funds in the amount of $365,586 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security State 911 De Department Fiscal Year 2020. Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grants. Two, Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 2020, Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. Invited Tori Clarkson, CFO, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Thank you for being here tonight. Good evening. Uh, this, uh, this entire award will be used to backfill ETD and police dispatcher wages. Uh, it's for our contract start date of 8-6-2019 through June 30th of 2020. Move favorable. Second. Second. Motion on the floor, favor recommendation, <laughs> favor recommendation back to full council is properly second. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. We'll go on to number five, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $275,110.27 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911, Department of Fiscal Year 20, State 911 Training Grant. Two, Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 20, State 911 Training Grant Fund. Invited Troy Clarkson, CFO, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Uh, uh, as, as it states, it's a training grant for 911 training. Uh, the majority is to be used to reimburse overtime uh, to, for people to attend these training co courses. Uh, about 50,000 of it is to pay vendors to conduct the classes that they attend. Move to recommend favorably. Second. The motion on the floor is properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, <laughs> kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, that motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Number six, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of total grant funds in the amount of $430,000 from Executive Office of Health and Human Services Fiscal Year 20 Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant to Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 2020 Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant Fund. Invited Troy Clarkson, CFO, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Uh, the majority of this funding goes to the uh, Old Colony YMCA. It's to pay for the street outreach and case management services of the Old Colony YMCA Safe Corners team, as, to, as well as to provide client incentives. Any questions? Entertain? Council. Just a quick question. This is a <coughs> kind of a recurring grant, right? We've had this before? Yes. Thank you. Mm 
Motion recommend favorable. Second. Second. This motion made it was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the <coughs> full council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, that carries. Favorable back to the full council. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Have a good night. Number seven, kindly. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $300,000 from Environmental Protection Agency Brownfield Assessment Grant to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Brownfield Assessment Grant Fund. Invited Tori Clarkson, CFO, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Mr. May, you couldn't have planned perfect timing. That was perfect. I, I was at the uh, planning board meeting right across the street. Oh, we know. So we know. listening you. to the monitor. Thank you for being here. Uh, good evening. Uh, we were successful in securing a grant from the uh, U.S. Department of Environmental uh, uh, Protection Agency, excuse me, um, the amount of $300,000. It does not require a city match. <laughs> Yay. Uh, and we're using this fund um, to explore our, our downtown area in advance <coughs> of development. We would like to know there's certain city owned properties, there's certain properties at the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Um, we'll be uh, working with developers and we want to know what's under those properties so that we have uh, an opportunity to reduce some of the risk and uncertainty. We can factor that into the development costs and, and make those projects happen. Move Thank to you. recommend favorably. Second. It's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded. It's a favor recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. Favorable back to the full council. Thank you, Mr. May. Go on to number eight, please. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program, HDIP, Tax Increment Exemption Agreement, TIE, for 93 Center Street between the City and 93 Center Street, LLC. Invited Tori Clarkson, CFO, Philip Nasralla, City Solicitor, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Ted Carmen, Concord Square Planning and Economic Development. Just to let you know, uh, Legislative Council Attorney Resnick was unable to join us tonight, but she had assured me that if need be, we could call her. Um, we could take a recess and call her, but I was under the impression someone from the solicitor's office would be here in, in, in the chambers tonight. I don't know if I don't see anybody here, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on, and if we need that, we should address that. Mr. Claxon, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Council. Uh, Obviously, at your last meeting, we had a fairly robust discussion on this. Uh, our team is here to answer any further questions you may have. I know uh, we had the opportunity uh, to, to meet after your last meeting with the, the mayor and the proponents for this and another one of the, um, the tie agreements. So the full team is here to engage and answer any questions you may have. Councilor Powell, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clarkson. A, a couple of questions I didn't ask the last time on this particular issue. Who negotiates the provisions of the tie agreement? Now, who, who, who from the city side, the administration, and uh, negotiates what the percentage will be over what period of time? I can't speak to, uh, obviously, uh, in the past, but for these specific agreements, the negotiations were generally conducted by uh, Mr. O'Donnell and myself under the guidance uh, and direction of the mayor. Okay, so with respect to 93 Center Street, how did you arrive at a 60% uh, abatement, for lack of a better word, over 20 years? What, what criteria do you use? Because I think most people, including myself, I have no idea what criteria you would look at to say this is what we think should be done over this period of time. Well, I, I'll, I'll speak to my negotiating strategy myself. Uh, I don't know that, that there's much, as much criteria that are used as a philosophy. As, so as I spoke at the previous meeting when you discussed this, uh, I believe that these agreements can uh, be and are an important economic development tool. <clears throat> and as I stated at the last meeting, uh, the city is only sharing in the new value that's created and I believe isn't losing uh, any money. So the, the baseline that exists uh, is only built upon. So the method by which uh, that value is shared is really the subject of negotiation. So uh, a, a, as you know, having researched many of these, they exist in many forms. Uh, I think my perspective was 
if these agreements can help bring development and spur development and residents uh, in the downtown area, then the city can and should do whatever it takes to attract those. So again, drawing on the discussion you had last time, five years from now, when there's more robust uh, residential living in the downtown, the city's position could, should be very different than it is now. Uh, but in, in my estimation, we're in a situation right now uh, where the revitalization of the downtown is not guaranteed. It's tenuous, uh, but there is most definitely momentum. Uh, and so using the guidance from the mayor, I think we took that approach to these negotiations. But, but cutting through that, you've got one agreement for 20 years at 60 percent. To go under the railroad bridge in Center Street, you've got another agreement that's 100 percent for the first five years and then another percentage for the next five years. So th there's got to be something that separates these different projects in, in the negotiating team's mind as they arrive at these percentages. And I see Mr. May getting up. And I'm, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot. I just don't know what we as a city use for criteria. And if we're going to have perhaps a few more of these, hopefully, I think it would be beneficial for all of us to know when you sit down with a developer, is it the size and scope? Is it the potential value uh, over time? Is it, you know, the number of residential units? Is it the type of commercial development that you might have on the first floor? I mean, there's got to be some substance to what you do. Well, I, I think it's all of those. And the specific needs, the financing needs, and the financial condition of the developer also uh, falls into the, our approach as well. So there is not, I would submit to you, a cookie cutter approach that you can apply to, to every one of these. I mean, you could certainly attempt to do that, but each building is different. Uh, the size and scope of each development is different. And the, again, the, the financing needs of each developer is different. So I think what we tried to do was primarily to protect the city's interest, uh, but then also negotiate an agreement that the developers could make work. Uh, a, as you heard from a couple of the developers at the last meeting, uh, even with these agreements, uh, this is an instant financial gratification for these developers. And they're making a commitment uh, to, to come into the city uh, at a time where the city is in transition. So I think in recognition of that commitment, the city is prepared to also make a commitment. Well, I in general, I would say, my opinion, th the city ought to have something on its website about TIFs and ties and some of the criteria we use, because I would not want to get into a situation where someone might claim, well, you were you know, you discriminated or you, you didn't do for us what you did for someone else. And I think if you have that published, that might help. Um, th this is an interesting one. Um, and, and some of us met with, with, Mr., uh, with Mr. Carmen. Uh, it, my understanding is he actually received a letter from the city indicating that the administration was in favor of the 60% over 20 years. and. You know, he has a right to, he, I think he has a right to take a look at that and think that it has some value, and he probably used it to go after some financing. Um, I don't think that that was the wisest thing to do. I think that if the decision rests with the city council, perhaps the letter should have said I'd lobby with the city council or I'd do something short of just endorsing it. But um, I, I, I'm going to support this with some reluctance. Um, I'm not happy about the 20 years, but I also don't want to send a message that after protracted negotiations, like we do with collective bargaining, that you pull the rug out from under someone who has operated in good faith. And I have no doubt that Mr. Carmen operates in good faith uh, with the city and with us. And, uh, and I appreciate the information you've provided. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you. And Council, sir. The solicitor did contact me, and I know he's here. So thank you for being here, Mr. Nazarella. Any other questions? Council Cruz, please. Not so much question as a statement. And again, I think uh, 
you know, I thank my colleague, Councillor Farwell, for th thinking these through so well. And I will say I had quite a few conversations in these last, since our last meeting with some commercial lenders. And I, I think each project is different, and which is part of the reason why somebody else wouldn't be able to come to us and say there's a discrimination issue because every, every project needs to be looked at separately and s every project isn't worth as much to us as a city as, as now we're discussing just the one right now. But some projects are linchpin projects and we need as a city council and as a city sometimes to be a little more forgiving on those and to, uh, to chase a little harder. It's the 20 years is frustrating, but to developer in this case, it, it takes those many, many years for the, uh, for the project to turn, it, turn itself around and to work. And the commercial lenders that I spoke to said without some of these things, they would never be able to raise the money. And then we just are moving back to square one and we're sitting here with nothing, with no projects going. And I know so many of us spoke so highly when our late mayor passed that we wanted to keep that ball rolling. And I think this is, these are, well, we'll just talk about the one right now. And to me, this is probably the most important piece of property left in downtown Brockton and we need to, we need to get going. So I think it's, I think we were very, very well founded to ask certain questions last week, but I think it's time to move forward on these and I'll be supporting these, so thank you. Thank you. Make a motion to recommend second. second. Uh, on the motion though, uh, councilors, after our last meeting, um, I, I actually conferred with attorney Resnick and we do have attorney Nazarella here. Um, these tie agreements, just like the TIFs, they don't run with the land in perpetuity. They run to the LLC, to the applicant. Uh, it's an agreement between the city of Brock and the applicant now if the LLC is, is assigned or sold or purchased, then it would run. Right. Um, could you just go, could you clarify that please, Attorney Nazarell? Because I believe there was a previous applicant that misspoke in the chamber a few weeks ago. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Councilor, Councilors. I, I think what you just stated, Council uh, President, is correct. They don't run with the land. And actually they are not assignable, at least it's not unilaterally assignable, even though it's not to an, it, it, it is to an entity, but it can be bilaterally consented to by both the municipality and the recipient uh, based on the merits. So the municipality has the opportunity to check the merits of the recipient and to ensure that his vision and plan going forward is in keeping with the template that was given to him at the time. Excellent. Any so questions for the attorney? None? Thank you very just much. Just as a... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Councilman Casco. I just have a comment on the motion. I think it's a word to the wise these last couple of weeks because we first found out about these tie agreements several days before the Finance Committee meeting two weeks ago. Um, so a word to the wise to the uh, employees at City Hall as well as to developers. We are open for business. We do care and we want to see our, our uh, our older sections of town, including the downtown and Campello and the north side developed. But I think you need to bring us in on what's going on and what kind of terms you're looking for before we get into, the, or, you know, before, just a few days before we get into this chamber. I, I think it would eliminate a lot of what, what we talked about two weeks ago because we would be in on what's going on. A and we would have the opportunity to ask our questions, not necessarily in a public forum, um, and not necessarily having some of the applicants come off like they're shocked we're asking any of these things. They're the best thing since sliced bread. So please, get us on board sooner than a few days before you're presenting it to us. We're not rubber stampers. We really <coughs> care about these terms. We really care about what happens to the city. Uh, Council, a good point, but uh, for clarification, you and I had exchanged an email a couple of days ago. We did. Um, <coughs> We, the law department, is not privy to these agreements before they, they arise here. We do not create them, nor do we negotiate them. When they do come to the department, what we do is review them as the form to see if there are certain substantive and procedural paragraphs and provisions in there that protect the city. So um, I think there was somewhere under the impression that we deal with those, we had those, and um, we, we were probably the last one on the train to be aware of the, uh, the documents. No, we were. We were the last ones on I the train. I was next to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor, uh, on the motion. Just one more thing, a point of explanation to you. <coughs> Council, I did talk to uh, Ro um, Robert Jenkins and a few of the other people involved, and basically what we used to do back in the day was when a project would come in, you would meet with the ward counter in which, who's 
every year it was, and the four at larges. You go over the, the situation with them, what the proposal is, what have you, and get at least five people involved, and then you can talk to your councils, uh, the other councils, whatever. So they are going to start doing that again. If it's in your ward, you're going to be involved. I told Mayor Rodriguez the same thing. This is what we need to do so we don't have problems like we did the last time and not everybody understanding what's going on. So that's, that will be happen, happening in the future, any future projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. There's a, there's a motion that was properly seconded, favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. We'll go on to the next agenda item, please. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program, HDIP, Tax Increment Exemption Agreement, TIE, for 127 Center Street between the City and 127 Center St Corner, LLC. Invited Tory Clarkson, CFO, Philip Nisralla, City Solicitor, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Attorney James Burke. Good evening. Whoever wants to jump up. <laughs> Again, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, similar to the last one, our, the full team is here, can answer any questions you have. Mr. Chairman, I'd Council. like to move favorable. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, on the motion. Okay, on the motion, Council, please. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, I, I do want to point out that I've ha I have spoken to these gentlemen. Okay, and they're doing a nice job, and they have an opening um, 75 commercial uh, week from tomorrow, uh, ribbon cutting, and everything's market rate. I think that the big thing is here that if you want to present something that you should, how would I say it, make it look as attractive as possible. I was eternally grateful to our CFO for explaining all the financial aspects of it, and I like it when things are public so people know what's going on and not assume that things are going on behind their back. So I, I believe that the way to continue this is to continue to have a dialogue and to let us know what's transpiring, if there's a backup, if there's a, a materials that are unable to be attained in continuing the construction. All of these different situations that transpire, we're currently experiencing a unique situation on Main Street, which we all affectionately refer to as the Ganley Building, and that was a demonstration of some serious lack of communication for a while there. And this will dramatically affect the downtown in more ways than one. But anyway, having said that, I'm excited about what 75 Commercial Street looks like, uh, and what I appreciate about the 127 Center Street is it's manageable. It's not this massive, you know, how would I say, project. It's manageable. And my big and you know and, and request on all of these from the developers is continued communication and just keep us, you know, posted. Show us things. Come to meetings. Connect with us. We have Downtown Broughton Association in downtown, Montello Business, Campello Business. There are ways that you can let people know what's transpiring and other business individuals. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you Councilor. There's a motion that was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation on, back on the to the Council. On the motion. On the motion, uh, I'm not going to support this, Councilors. So I'd like to explain why. Uh, this project is 28% smaller than 93 Center Street, and yet they're looking for a much larger uh, tax increment exemption, 100% for the first five years, 80% fiscal years 6 through 10, and 70% 11 through 20. This is by no means going to have the same measurable effect on the downtown that 93 Center Street is, and, and I'm not willing to give away those kinds of, those kinds of exemptions. Uh, I don't know why it's so much higher. Uh, I don't want to get into that tonight because I, I don't think anyone knows, but for that reason, I will not be voting in uh, favorable on this. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. May, do you, do you have any uh, enlightenment on that? If, if I may, sir. Yes. Um, unlike the other two projects that are before you, this is a new construction, so they have to scrape the pad, do whatever remediation needs to be done, and it's going to involve some steel construction, too. So that adds significantly to the cost. I just wanted to thank you for out. that information. Yeah. Anybody else on the motion? There's a motion on the floor. It's properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, kindly raise your hand. It carries. It's favorable back to the full council. Uh, we're going to read number 10, please. 
ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program, HDIP, Tax Increment Exemption Agreement, TIE, for 19-31 Main Street, between the City and Brockton Development a Company, LLC. Invited toward Clarkson CFO, Philip Nisrala, City Solicitor, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Catherine Norcott. Councilors, it's my understanding, and we got confirmation from both the city planner and also Mr. Jenkins, that the uh, proposed applicant has withdrawn. So thus, I'm going to entertain a motion on this specific Move to matter. Table. Second. It's a motion to table agenda item number 10, and it's seconded. Thus, under Robert's rule, we don't have any discussion. All in favor of tabling number 10, please raise your hand. All opposed, it's tabled. We'll go on to the next agenda item, please. Ordered that the mayor and or real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land containing approximately 1.4121 acres located at and known as Plot 30 Bridge Street, more particularly described as parcel identification number 128-337. Invited Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez, Marty Brophy, real estate custodian. Councilors, again, uh, Mr. Brophy used to be the real estate custodian. It's changed. Attorney Nazarella's capacity solicitor, he serves in that. Um, Attorney Nazarella, thank you. I missed the introduction. But, um, this was to acceptance of Bridge Street. I just yes. found out about this about three hours ago. We weren't yep. notified earlier. I think there was a mishap. They sent it to Mr. Brophy, and then around 3, 4 o'clock, I got it. And, uh, Mr. Chairman? Councillor. I'm sponsoring this. I can give you a little bit of background. If you could, it, thank it, you. It is in Ward 4. Um, the people who own the Holmes McDuffie florist have closed it, and they are relocating, I think, to North Carolina. It, this was written up in the Enterprise newspaper not too long ago. And this is an additional parcel of land that was located behind their property. It abuts the river. And they've decided to give it to the city if we will accept it. Um, you can see it's a pretty good size. It's 1.41 acres. Um, and that's why we're here this evening. Councilor, is there any, uh, is there any conditions to the gift? I'm not, afraid, I'm not aware of any, not but I've seen nothing that. in writing. Okay, but that was great information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll entertain a motion if we have any other questions. If not. Uh, motion. Motion to recommend favorably. Thank you. Second. 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 It's a favorable back to the full council. All in favor, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, it carries. It's favorable back to the council. Thank you for being here, attorney. Uh, number 12, if we could read that in the record, please. Resolved that mayor is hereby authorized on behalf of the city of Brockton to enter into a tax increment financing agreement with new Westgate Mall LLC, encompassing the property described as above, whereby provided new Westgate Mall LLC satisfies certain conditions more fully described in the tax financing agreement, and be it further resolved that upon execution of the tax increment financing agreement, mayor is hereby authorized on behalf of the city of Brockton to petition the Massachusetts Economic Assistance Coordinating Council for its approval and endorsement of the tax increment financing agreement. Invited, Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez, Toy Clarkson, CFO, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors. Councilor Isaac, please. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion to table this agenda Second. item. Second. Second. Oh. There is a uh, motion on the floor. It was seconded for table. Thus, under Robert's rules, no discussion. All in favor of tabling it. All opposed, it's carried. It's tabled. Councilors, mm -hmm. um, just, just, to, just to kind of go over calendars. Um, next Monday, again, September 9th, will be full city council. Um, however, uh, I, I'm kind of leaning towards the following Monday, like past practice, because it's the night before the election, not to have a FinCom. Um, uh, I, I just have to kind of vet it out with Mel and, and see what the agenda items are. But put in, put, maybe put that as a placeholder that it would, be, uh, it would not be held on uh, Monday, September 16th. Anything else before us tonight, Councilor? Well, I have some more positive uh, good things. Well, everybody, good luck starting school this week for many of you. But um, I've been asked by one of the most dedicated volunteers in the city, Joan Madden, to announce her 19th annual Salisbury Park picnic reunion on Saturday, September 7th, 
let's see here, it begins around, I don't know, it says sunrise to sunset. I'm not so sure about that. But anyway, there's um, people uh, starting up in the morning and staying there till uh, the sun does set. And that's Saturday, September 7th. And um, this is Salisbury Park, which everybody parks at the Plouffe School on Crescent Street. And I want to mention, if it rains, it'll be on Sunday, September 8th. And uh, another annual thing that's taking place, again, in the downtown area, is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Day. And uh, this one particular event will take place um, on Saturday, September 7th. It's indoors, so it doesn't matter if it rains. And this is uh, pretty amazing. Dancers, performers, singers, food, and the like, um, for one to four free <coughs> event and celebrating all 28 Spanish-speaking nations um, in uh, many ways. So um, I hope uh, everybody gets a chance to come to the Broughton Main Library for that. Thank you. Houses, where, where's that located? Um, the um, Hispanic Heritage Day is at the Broughton okay. Main Library, and Salisbury Park, as I mentioned. People park at the Plouffe School, and um, they kind of spread out from there. Thank you, Council. <laughs> All right. uh, Councilor Thank Isaac, you. please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A moment of personal privilege. Absolutely, Councilor. Um, I would just like to make an announcement. I found out today that we are repaving Cross Street. So um, I, the DPW hasn't had a chance to um, send out flyers, I believe, in the past. They've contacted residents. So we do apologize in advance for that. So Cross Street is being repaved from uh, Prospect Street to Battles. And um, I believe the work may have started. If not, it's going to start very soon. So so once again, once again, we apologize for any inconvenience. There will be some detours, but um, the final results will have a repaved cross street. Thank Great you. Great news. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lally, please. Moment of personal privilege, of Mr. Course. Chairman. I just wanted to make everyone aware that uh, Friday, September 6th, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at McKinley Park on Winter Street, uh, the Village Neighborhood Association will be hosting an after-school Fun in the Park event. Uh, they're going to open, have a grand opening for the park's little free library, and they're going to have a, a reading from children's book author Carolyn Curtis. Uh, you know, they're also advertising crafts, face painting, things like that. Uh, it should be a good time. I don't think I'm going to get my face painted, but everyone else, you're more than welcome to. But uh, I, I hope to see everyone down there. Thank you. Could you give me the time again, Councillor? Uh, Friday, September 6th, 4.30 to 6 p.m. Thank you, Councillor. Anything else before us tonight? Seeing none, thank you. Have a good evening. Drive careful. We're adjourned.